welcome you to this presentation, which is a strange format and something that I'm not really used to in our home office. So I will present about connecting visual information with the semantics that we do in one of our EU-funded projects called ExaMode that we coordinate in SEER. And it works on histopathology images. So um, what we try to leverage weak labels, so global labels that we can automatically extract instead of manually annotating image regions. And I start the presentation with this strange picture where you can see me and Manfredo Azzori uh, actually fighting cancer cells. So this is a histopathology image. These images are huge. They're 100,000 by 100,000 pixels. And it is something um, that is difficult to process and analyze manually under a microscope, but also for a computer algorithm. So first of all, a few words on, on EXA mode itself. So EXA mode is uh, uh, an abbreviation for Extreme Scale Analytics via Multimodal Ontology Discovery and Enhancement. So we see here is already we want to work on very large scale data. We want to work on semantics, so ontologies, understanding what is in the image. Um, and we want to work on histopathology, which is tissue images of, in large part, cancer images. We're trying to detect like what type of cancer is it, how destructive it, is it, how aggressive, to really optimize treatment uh, to, to these cancers. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, the images can be large, 100,000 to 100,000 pixels, um, and there are several for a single patient. So in needle biopsies of the prostate, for example, there are usually 12 images of this size that need to be treated. The project was funded under EU Horizon 2020 and the ICT call 12, uh, uh, that uh, uh, from 2018 that was published then uh, with an acceptance rate of about 7% so it was very competitive to get this funding and we coordinate this project in here. We have a budget of slightly low, below 5 million euros, seven partners from various backgrounds. We have two academic partners, two hospital partners, two companies and uh, a data center, the Dutch National Supercomputing Center. Just to um, show this also in a graphical way, so we are spread out around Europe. We have uh, two partners from Italy, with uh, one partner from Switzerland, two from the Netherlands, and then from Poland and uh, uh, from Bulgaria. And as I said, we had the University of Padova and HSSO, we are the academic partners, so we work um, on text and on image analysis. We have two hospitals, so one hospital partner who has a very strong technical component, so they've put up several uh, uh, deep learning algorithms on histopathology already and one of the first hospitals that was fully digital in Europe, in Catania, in Sicily. Then we have two companies, Ontotax really works on semantics, so data analysis mainly from text but linking that with images as well, and Microscope IT which is a, from Poland and they do uh, really image analysis, decision support based on images and surrounded as a background of this, we have the uh, CERSARA, which is the Dutch supercomputing center. And I mean, we can look at the work packages of the project and how we're organized. So we have two fundamental work packages where we do uh, basic research uh, applied to the domain of histopathology. We have um, one of the hospitals with a strong technical component, Rathbout University Medical Center, and they integrate what we supply in terms of image analysis and text analysis into applications. And then we have the two companies that uh, do exploitation of the outcomes for their clients, plus we have a hospital that is a showcase for how it can be applied in, in a digital hospital, digital in terms of histopathology. And then well, we run the management, and we have a company running the exploitation, communication and dissemination of this. This is a little bit what our workflow looks like. So we work on the one hand on digital images that are supplied by our two hospital partners, but we also use publicly available resources as open uh, data makes these resources available and much of funded research by, by the national funding agencies has to release data which makes these data available for us as well. And we will do the same, so we are producing data from the hospitals where we extract information from the digital pathology reports and uh, then we use the clinical slides. On the other hand, we also work on the scientific literature because many cases or much of the knowledge in, uh, uh, in, the bio, uh, in, in the medical domain is stored in the biomedical literature. So it's published, it's made available, it's shared with other researchers. And there are millions of images that we can use to train our algorithms. So this is something else we do that I will describe in this uh, short presentation uh, with a few words. And 
So the two basic uh, research work packages will then feed uh, their results into uh, the uh, work package that does technology transfer into the hospital components, into decision support, and then we will have the, uh, two, uh, the three exploitation partners, so the two companies at one hospital, that will exploit it in their environment and uh, communicate to the respective communities. We have, in the project we had to choose which domains to go more in depth and uh, we had in the past worked much on prostate cancer but it's also a domain where many uh, uh, tools already exist, commercial tools are available so we decided to go for colon cancer, it's a frequent disease, there's much screening data available we're going for lung cancer, same thing, there's much data, much screening available uterus, cervix, again uh, a relatively frequent domain, but there's much less research done compared to prostate or breast cancer, for example. And then we wanted to have one area of histopathology that is not linked to cancer. So we choose uh, celiac disease, which again is something that has been increasing over the last 20 years and uh, that causes a lot of work on the histopathology departments. So these are the areas that we choose to work on. And um, We've seen over the last 10 years really a rise in deep learning approaches to medical imaging, medical data analysis more in general. But these networks have many parameters and to train the networks and develop machine learning models we need a lot of annotated data. And it's easy to get annotations for cats, dogs or cars in web images, but if we look at medical images it's very expensive to get. So we need to find specialists actually doing the annotation and if we have to pay them, it, uh, it is extremely expensive and very, very time consuming. And many of the, the experts are actually not available. Um, then there are many medical data sets when they require the medical routine. Common cases are very, very frequent. And then rare cases are extremely rare. And so we have a class imbalance. And we need to look into how to include that into a training. And how can we, we, we can leverage across that a little bit. And um, well, that's why we've been using a large variety of, uh, of different sources. So we use PubMed Central, which is uh, uh, resources of the open access biomedical literature. We use TCJ, the Cancer Genome Atlas, TCIA, the Cancer Imaging Archive, all archives that make data sets available. There's some annotations, mostly non-pixel level annotation, but global labels. So we have a report that comes with the images, and we can then analyze the text of the report, extract the main information, and use that for, uh, uh, for our decision making. So in our project we want to train deep learning models with weak labels to limit the manual amount of, uh, 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 of uh, training annotations that uh, we need to make because it's expensive and it's often a bottleneck in medical projects also because of the limited availability of, of data. We then we'd like to combine semantics that we extracted from the reports from the text of the scientific literature as well with image data. So we want to do multimodal data processing. We developed already domain ontologies in the project, so specifically for the diseases that uh, we're using in the project. And uh, then we want to make this scalable, so we can actually run it on a petabyte of images that uh, we will get in the course of this project. And uh, at the same time, we use it on clinical data for the application. We also want to use uh, data from the literature, in this case images from the literature, to our uh, um, to, com so to complement what we're doing, because in the literature, the rare cases are presented. So this is what is oversampled, and this is what is lacking in most of the clinical archives, because rare cases are rare. It's just to give an idea of the domain ontology, so we have our use cases here. We then look at like what is linked to the diagnosis, so what are the visual factors, uh, the procedures that are used, anatomical areas, etc. etc. So we develop a domain ontology for every one of our four use cases. And just to show the medical literature, this is the number of images, uh, the number of articles that have been published per year. So we can see uh, it's gone up exponentially. So uh, this year I think we're at a range of seven, eight hundred thousand articles that are made available, only open access articles, so we can use the content. And the number of images per article, that's also slightly increasing, so we can see it's three to four images per article. We have a couple million uh, articles available. But then, we have strange images, and we actually need to uh, identify which are the images that we're interested in. So, we manually, separate, manually annotated a subset of the images, 
into a, a class of, I think, 31 different classes of clinical and non-clinical images, manually annotated it, and then we ran automatic machine learning algorithms to train models for what we are interested in. So we can run this for any other type of images. We did it for histopathology images. And um, in total, we had 14 million images at the beginning of this year that we now ran our automatic tools on. We to identify all of the histopathology images. And I think we're in the range of a few hundred thousand that, uh, that we have. But there are many other figures that look similar. So here we can see, uh, this is a manually drawn histopathology image. So they, these were incorrectly identified as histopathology. We then manually checked some of those and, uh, and removed them. We also have compound figures. We can see figures of different parts that are connected together. Usually there's like A, B, C in the uh, in the figures, so we can identify the sub-figures, and this allows us to link the text that is uh, in the caption of the figure also to a specific sub-figure, and we can then cut them apart. I mean, these contain only histopathology images, but many compound figures contain a mix, like some tissue, but then also radiography, for example. And when we look at the data from the medical literature, Apartment Central in this case, so the open access literature, we have a lot of information available that we can use uh, uh, to actually optimize the training. So we have the text of the captions. For every figure we have a caption text. Sometimes it's very short, but sometimes it contains a, a very good amount of information. If we have compound figures, often we have subparts of the text that we can then link to uh, the subfigure parts. We also have the full text of the article. The full text usually gives us a good story about objectives, motivation, objective, methods, results, etc. So we can also automatically analyze this. We have the title, which usually uh, explains the main outcomes of the study. So what anatomic area, what disease is targeted. So this is also very important information. To then make the, these data available that we would like to, um, we actually need to have several steps. So first we do an analysis of the images that are available. Well, there are about 20 something million, but some of them are small, are just like buttons or they have a strange aspect ratio. So these are removed. And then we end up with about 40 million we do a uh, classification of the figure types. Uh, for that we use image data, so the pixels of the image, we use text, and we use everything that is seen non-relevant for us. Um, at the same time we detect compound figures and then cut them apart, so again we can remove what we're not interested in and concentrate on, on what we're really interested in, in our case is to pathology. As I had mentioned, one of the big advantages of uh, the medical literature is that we can use rare images, so unusual cases, untypical cases, because this is usually what people write about in articles. They wouldn't present standard or normal cases. And this helps us to create a critical mass for rare diseases, but it also allows us to train with a large variability of different images, different image types, different disease progressions, for example, and also images from many laboratories, because quite often when we look at results of machine learning, they're optimized on one specific laboratory, so they work really well on this specific hospital at a given time, but if any of the procedures changes, um, it wouldn't generalize well, so that all of a sudden the tool would not work anymore. This is something that is risky, so we really want to make sure that we develop models that are stable across different scanners, across different types of staining, because one day um, the stain might be slightly different, or the temperature is a little higher, so the images are not exactly the same. This is something that we would like to look at. We also have an exponentially increasing amount of, of data that becomes available. So more journals become open access, so more journals become available, including their articles. There's a larger number of publications because more research is being done. And um, so this is something that we, um, we are now including into the training of our clinical tools. But one of the things we started with is actually looking at clinical data, because this is what we have most impact. And this is what we can evaluate whether what we, eva uh, what we analyze actually really works. And as I mentioned, we've, worked, we've been working quite a bit on prostate cancer. So uh, until we have a large number of uh, data available for our colon cases, for example, we've been con continuing to work on, on prostate cancer to develop our models. And um, we have a very large number of weak labels in public archives. So where we have, we know that this is um, Gleason scores 3 plus 4, for example, for a specific case in the report, but we don't know where in the image the specific parts that are related to the cancer are. So this is something we, we can easily get, but it's something that is that difficult to, to, to analyze and exploit. 
And we also want to make sure by having, in this case, three data sets, uh, to, that we can evaluate things on a completely different data set than what we train. We can see that we can get a good baseline with totally different training, but then by fine-tuning it on the data we have, we can still get very good results in the, in the large generalization. So this is a study that we're currently working on. Um, so it's, uh, uh, what we can see is that uh, there, uh, there are, um, uh, we have a data set with strong labels, tissue microarrays, so it's small parts, it's not 100,000 by 100,000 pixels, but it's rather 3,000 by 3,000 pixels. And then we have two weekly annotated data sets. And we can start annotating with the strong labels and then uh, add more information of the weak labels. And we can evaluate this separately on each of the data sets. So when we look at the performance of this, we can see that this is the interrated disagreement. So two pathologists agree in this, this case. So we use a Kappa score to do the evaluation. And we can see for Gleason patterns uh, that are maybe more localized and, and harder to get. Um, we, we do approach the, uh, uh, the interrated disagreement of histopathologies, but for Gleason scoring, where we combine the two most frequent patterns, this is actually something where we were very good, we're very close to, to uh, uh, a grader. What we can also see is that if we uh, use, uh, if we train on data set where we don't have strong labels, in this case, we only have weak labels, so image level labels. We can train with the strong labels from completely different data sets. We get reasonable results. I mean, we're not as good as uh, uh, um, a pathologist might be, but we get reasonable results. If we train with uh, weak labels on the same data set and we use a percentage of the labels that we have available, we can, here we use all of the labels, so this is the maximum that we get with the weekly supervised. If we combine the two, we can see that at some point uh, we actually do, do get quite a bit above what we're doing. So I already come to the conclusion. So as a conclusion, I can say that deep learning definitely has changed the way that medical imaging is done in terms of artificial intelligence. They have a lot of potential. Many techniques work reasonably well. But we also need to make sure that we compare it on the right data set, that we make sure that we include uh, completely different data sets in the evaluation to make sure that tools actually generalize well and work under a variety of conditions and also if there are same changes in the setups. We need a lot of training data for these to make them work. But uh, manually annotating images on a pixel level is extremely expensive. Specialists are often overloaded. And this means that as we're working on images that change over time, we will actually need to re-update and remake more data available regularly, which, it, which doesn't work. But by learning from global labels, something that we can automatically extract from the reports and turn that onto semantics, and by using images also from the biomedical literature, we can actually reduce this and we can get much better results. So, as a conclusion, um, I would like to thank everybody on our team. So, this is not me doing the work, but it's a larger team. You can get more information on what we do on matgift.hgbs.ch, publication.hgbs.ch, or xmo.eu. These are the web pages that we use. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.